Okay, well, uh, welcome everybody to our basement, Greg Constable and Carolyn Rogers, in case you don't know us. We live in Invermere and we are congregation members of Windermere Valley Shared Ministry. And we've been um, doing the music from our basement for our Zoom church services. And we just thought we would um, offer some music for you to listen to over the Christmas season. The first one is called O Come All Ye Faithful. It is also known by the name, the Portuguese hymn, or by its Latin term, Adesti Fidelis. And in my job as a high school band director, I was playing and there were a couple of kindergarten kids in the audience watching us and I introduced it as a Desti Fidelis and they said, oh good, Dusty Potatoes. So ever since that time, which has got to be almost 35 years ago, I've referred to the song as Dusty Potatoes. Enjoy. <clears throat> quite a pace. <laughs> the uh, next one that we're doing is from the Voices United hymn book, uh, number 71, Twas in the moon, moon of Winter Time. And I'm going to play um, a little bit as a prelude on my flute with piano, and then we'll start singing together. So feel free to join in from your home. And the second verse, the second time through, the first time through, it's going to be a low flute tone. And this reminds me of going oh, to yeah. the midnight service at Preston, Christchurch Preston, with my family and a, a lady in the congregation who we love very dearly called Aunt Vita, always requested to have this one on. So this one sort of to inspire some of those memories with my side of the moon. Twas in the moon of winter time, our Huron Carol.
wanting to give a shout out to um, our elders in our family, which is um, Greg's dad and my mom and uh, Christine and William's grandma, Betty. And so this, this last song, Twas in the Moon, moon of Wintertime, uh, we wanted to dedicate to um, Greg's dad, Bill. And uh, we know that it's been tough um, this year for the older folks with COVID, so. So our next one is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel for flute and piano. And I just need to get my music here. So while she's doing that, <laughs> this is the oldest selection in our hymnal dating back to the 1500s, or sorry, 15th century, 1400s. And when I was at university, <coughs> I played Debussy's prelude called the Sunken Cathedral. And this is very, very reminiscent of that with the stone. O come, O come, Emmanuel, not a Christmas carol, but an Advent carol. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. I'm not sure if we're still recording, but uh, we'll just carry on as is. And our next piece is Mary's Little Boy Child. Um, and this piece is dedicated to my mom. And uh, so uh, my, uh, <laughs> my memory um, growing up at Christmas time is of my mom playing this piece of music. And uh, we haven't always had a piano in our house, but when we did, she would always play this just beautifully and hit the high notes. And uh, so when I wanted to dedicate a song to my mom, this is the one that I picked. And I'm going to stand up and read at the piano because that's kind of what we used to do at our house. Let's see if we can still see me, kind of. <laughs> Don't want to cut off my head, but here we go. Okay. <laughs> So, sorry to go out of the screen for a second while we grab our music. <clears throat> this next piece we've had to work uh, really hard on. Um, sometimes you hear a piece of music over the radio, and uh, for me anyway, and I get these bright ideas, oh, wouldn't it be great to sing that? And it turns out to be a little more challenging than we thought. Um, how we look at it is it's kind of like a prayer. And so we offer um, this to you. We know that this year has been really hard um, for um, all of us in so many different ways. And so um, we hope that this song kind of touches your heart um, from us to you. <clears throat> Let me bring 
So um, in this next little part, we are going to dedicate this next little part um, to, well, uh, this book, The Little Christmas Tree, was Greg's late wife Margaret's um, book. And so we want to dedicate the reading of this to Margaret's, Margaret's mom, mom um, <laughs> Betty Schofield, and uh, Christine and William, I guess, used to read this. Yeah, my two children, I have very strong memories of my two children watching this book while Margaret read it and doing all the little fun actions. Mm -hmm. So you'll see the fun actions in a minute and we're going to read this. Yes. Uh, would you like and to here we have Teddy and Puppy and Horsey mm -hmm. sitting mm -hmm. here reading with us. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so I'll start out. So I've been shopping, buying and spending. I've been shopping for a special Christmas tree. I wanted a big one, all covered in silver. I wanted a big, brightly covered Christmas tree, but all they had was a little green bear one. And that's the one I brought home with me. Okay. I've been twisting, gluing and sticking. I've been making shepherd's crooks for my tree. Some shepherds on a hillside were guarding sheep from danger but today the shepherd's crooks are hanging from my tree. Oh. And watch what happens, kids. <laughs> are they on there? Oops, wait. Oh, I have to pull a little harder, I think. Oh, I had to pull out. Gosh, I needed to practice that. There we go. There's the crooks on the tree. Okay, let's see what else. I've been looking, searching, and finding. I've been finding some angels for my tree. The angels brought a message to the shepherds on the hillside. I found some gold and white ones for the branches of my tree. I've been watching, listening, and waiting. I've been waiting to hear the angels say, good news we bring you, peace and joy forever. A baby's born in Bethlehem. Christ is born today. So, here we go. There's the angels on the tree. Now that tree is getting more and more filled up. I've been running, jumping, and leaping. 
I've been running with the shepherds and their sheep, running to the stable, dodging crowds of people, looking for the baby. Let me have a peep. I've been finding, choosing, and saving. I've been choosing animals for my tree. I've chosen some sheep, a cow, and a donkey. They crowded around the manger the baby came to see. Uh -huh. There we go. Oh yeah, there they are. Now, what else have we got? I've been reaching, balancing, and stretching. I've been fixing a bright star to my tree. A new star in the heavens shining through the night sky. A star for all to follow, for all the world to see. I've been busy cutting and sticking. I've been busy wrapping presents for my tree. The wise men found the baby, gave him pre special presents. Presents for the baby king they've come so far to see. I've been kneeling, pausing, and stopping. I've been wondering about the baby king. He must be very special, no ordinary baby. The angels called him Jesus, and wise men gifts did bring. So watch what happens to the tree. There we go. There's the gifts on the tree now. And the star on the top. This is the one that my kids found the favorite one. <laughs> I've been happy, smiling and laughing. I've been so happy all day long. Today has been a party, a lovely birthday party. Happy birthday, Jesus. And now I sing this song. Uh, that's just a metaphorical. We're actually going to say the song. <laughs> I went shopping, buying and spending. I went shopping and now I'm pleased to say, I'm glad I found a bare tree with nothing on the branches so it could tell the story of your birth on Christmas day. Good news we bring you, peace and joy forever. A baby's born in Bethlehem. Christ is born today. Okay, anybody who's watching this, watch what happens. <laughs> this is a tricky one because it's well, well worn. It turns right into this, the nativity scene. There you go. And that is the end of our story. So we will go over now and bring you some more music. It looks like we're back um, from our story, um, back at our musical spots in our basement. And this next song that um, we picked is, is uh, a song um, by Bruce Harding. And so we kind of want to give a shout out to Cheryl and Bruce Harding, who are friends of ours. And we've been, they do the music for an interfaith service that Greg and I have been enjoying um, via Zoom and we've gotten to be friends with them and this song is so beautiful. Um, it's called Spirit God Be Our Breath and it's about embracing change so I just thought the words would be perfect for this year and uh, so we're going to do four verses and then I there's a descant on the flute so we'll do one more at the end. <clears throat> Spirit God, be our breath, be our song. 
Great. And this <clears throat> next one is um, a, uh, a, another Advent piece, actually. It's called The King of Glory, and it's a very dance-like piece. Um, we uh, have one granddaughter, Ingrid, that at this stage in her life just loves to dance. So maybe she'll be dancing to this with uh, dancing for her little brother, Frederick, who's just a couple of months old, a brand new 2020 baby. <laughs> this is an Israeli folk tune that has been adapted to play for flute and piano. And piano, <clears throat> <it's a star. clears throat> Yep. We're back again um, under the Christmas tree and uh, we, well, I, I got this idea. Um, I read every morning some, uh, I guess, um, little readings from this book called Anchors of the Soul and it's by Joyce Rupp and it says daily wisdom for inspiration and guidance and on December 10th, um, I read a little bit uh, a, 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 a story or, that she wrote, and it's called God's Ways of Being Known. Angels appear at significant moments in people's lives. They act as messengers of God, guiding, inviting, protecting, giving direction. They offer both comfort and challenge. Angels in scripture remind us there is a spiritual realm in our lives where God is always desiring to be known and heard. Advent and Christmas is a good time to be more aware of the spiritual dimension, to be open to hearing the voice of God, to be open to receiving comfort and guidance, whether this comes in prayer or in the hidden disguise of another person who is an unexpected messenger of God for us. And then it says, today I am open and alert to God's messengers. And uh, so uh, um, that kind of re reminded me that Greg and I have both had some experiences um, over the years, because we're kind of getting on in years, um, some kind of neat experiences where we, we've um, been given direction or guidance or comfort in unexpected ways. And we just thought we would share some of that with you. Um, I know my mom has been saying that as terrible as COVID has been, there's also been some incredible um, unexpected kindnesses that have happened from, and unexpected things go on. And uh, so we just thought we would um, talk about that a little bit from our own experience. And uh, Greg's gonna go first. A couple of angel stories for you, but you need to understand the background first. Uh, my late wife, Margaret, contracted breast cancer just as my daughter was finishing nursing. So uh, this would be about seven or eight years into our marriage. And the cancer eventually claimed her. She suffered from it or lived with it, whichever your perspective is, perspective is rather, for half our married, life. And I was in a position as a high school band teacher bringing up two kids. And I was doing something with my daughter and Margaret was at the hospital in the lounge and I stopped by to see her. And she was very, very lucid, even though she was under a fairly healthy regimen of morphine. 
and I visited with her a little bit and then she dozed right off and I started to walk back and I felt something grabbing at my coat and I'm not just talking about a subtle yank I'm honestly I thought somebody was there pulling at me I turned around nobody was there the yank stopped I kept walking it started again so I went back and spent a bit more time with her she never came out of her coma however I uh, just got a chance to sit with her for a bit I walked home, got dinner for the kids, picked up my daughter at whatever it was that she was supposed to do. And then the next morning, got a phone call from the hospital that you better get here with everybody because she died the next day. So that was one little angel grab that I had. That was 2008. And I decided that I was going to bring up the kids on my own with help from various caregivers, of course, because I was still holding down a full-time job and a very busy one as a high school band teacher. So all during the high school years of my son, I was bringing the kids up. He graduated in 2011, three years after Margaret died. My daughter, Christine, graduated in 2017. And in the spring of 2017, I was in the church, chair of church council, and we were seated at various locations as a council, trying to figure out the proper placement for a screen. Well, Carolyn, who'd been in our congregation for about seven years at that time, uh, was sitting at the back and I walked towards the back to see what the perspective was there and felt a, a very very definite push towards her. I thought it was another member of council and I turned around to say smarten up and there was nobody near me. When I took my eyes off where the screen was going to be and started walking back here was a push towards Carolyn again. So I guess that was some divine intervention <laughs> and invited for her for a coffee. And uh, well, we've been married <laughs> since June. What was that date? <laughs> June of 2019, June 8th, 2019. Okay. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. Uh, Greg's experience was, uh, you know, very, very concrete. Um, <laughs> And he always says to me, he doesn't read between the lines. He needs a definite, <laughs> he needs definite direction. Mm -hmm. And that's actually really helpful to know. It's in our marriage, it's caused me um, to learn to be clear uh, in my communication. And so it's kind of a gift, actually. <clears throat> so um, uh, my first story is um, just a short one that I remember um, as a little girl living in London, Ontario, I don't know how old I would have been, maybe about nine. I was old enough to climb trees. And I remember climbing a tree in our front yard. Um, and I hope my mom doesn't tell me that there was no tree in our front yard, but I totally remember climbing this tree and falling out of it. And I thought for sure I was going to get really hurt on the way down and somehow I felt um, something, um, I felt myself slow down and something kind of hold me and carefully put me on the ground. And it's, you know, I really, I don't know whether that actually really happened, but the memory of it has always stayed with me um, like a feeling of being protected. And it was probably one of the first times when I thought, wow, um, I can be by myself and yet I can still feel sort of like um, there's something else besides me, I guess, in, in the world. I guess maybe at that age, I was, I, I don't know. It stuck with me my, and I don't have the greatest memory for things, but that stuck yeah. with me. Um, so my, um, and my second story, I actually wrote this story down because that was easier for me. Um, being recorded or not? Yes, yes we, are. we are. Okay. Um, sometimes our internet becomes a little bit unstable and I can see that. So, uh, anyway, here we are back again. So, uh, my next, I actually wrote, um, my next um, story I was going to say out, and it's called The Christmas Hug. So Christmas 2020 will be a Christmas we remember like no other. There have been so many adjustments every one of us have had to make and changes beyond our control, all of which reminds me of another Christmas that I felt separated from loved ones and struggling to find a new normal. 
Christmas of 1999, my children, aged 11 and 15, seemed to have adjusted to the divorce of their parents much better than I was adjusting. I still struggled with loneliness at times, especially during the holidays when I missed the big extended family gatherings we had had with my former husband's family. That Christmas Eve, I drove to pick up our sons from their dad's house to take them to the evening service at our church. It was snowing as I got out of the car and big fluffy flakes landed on my coat in the dark stillness of the night. As I approached the house, I could hear familiar laughing coming from inside and I froze on the porch, a lump in my throat, praying for the strength to knock on the door and get out of there without making a scene. The door opened to a chaotic but happy scene of present opening, which suddenly died down to an awkward silence that seemed to encircle the room like a cloud. But then, out of the blue, a little voice from the littlest person in the room said quite insistence, insistently, coat off. Then louder, coat off. And then even louder, coat off. As I knelt down to tell my son's 22-month-old stepbrother, William, that I couldn't stay because his brothers and I were going to church, he put his arms around me, leaned his sweet face into my shoulder, and gave me a Christmas hug that I would never forget. Um, and an update to this story is that Will, his parents, and other treasured family attended Greg's and my wedding last year. Will has never heard this story before, and he might be embarrassed for me to say that I believe he was some kind of angel messenger for me back in 99. Nonetheless, I am forever grateful for the peace, comfort, and hope that washed over me when a little toddler angel reached out to me in hospitality and love. So my last one isn't really an angel story. It's a miracle story. And it goes back to the old Christ Church in Invermere. I was playing the organ and Reverend Dean Houghton was having his ordination service and the church was packed. And my job was supposed to be in the very, very back room to flip a switch to turn on the eternal light, which is a red light that's right above the, the altar. I forgot. And by the time I saw yeah, that it didn't look, did? yeah, by the time I saw that it looked like it was supposed to be on, it wasn't on. And I was mortified. I couldn't leave very well during the service and walk all the way to the back. And there was nobody near the back that I could catch an eye of to say, please go turn that on. Nobody knew where the switch was. And believe me, from this standpoint, the organ perched there, I had a view of everyone. Well, the service continued and I don't know what happened. But all I do know is the next time I looked up, the light was on. <laughs> and nobody went into the back room to do that. Now you can rationalize this by saying there was a short in the church uh, wiring. Uh, I don't believe it. I believe that was a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, and my last um, story is kind of a neat one as well. Um, and it's, it's one that I remember um, with, a, with a lot of joy, actually, because it, it was fun. Um, um, but it didn't, it didn't quite start out that way. I, uh, when I used to live, not in Invermere, but up at Panorama, I used to be in town quite a bit. And I would often go to Dorothy Lake and sit at the benches there. And I, uh, I did notice that um, I had gotten to know Greg and William and Christine by then, and I saw that Margaret Spench was there. I didn't usually sit on her bench, but um, I would sit sort of at a bench in front. And I often um, would think about the people that have passed in my life that I missed, one of them being my best friend who also died of breast cancer when she was 40. And um, her oldest daughter, Mary, is my goddaughter and was also at our wedding last year. But I, I you know, I sometimes miss my best friend and uh, I was feeling lonely and, uh, but enjoying the beauty of the view that particular day. And I remember thinking about Margaret, I might've just left church or whatever. And I remember thinking, it's just not fair. You know, it's just not fair that Margaret and Janet are gone, darn it all. and. 
they have these beautiful children. And so I was kind of talking to Margaret in my head, just going, you know, your kids are so sweet. You would be so proud of them. And, uh, you know, their dad's doing a pretty darn good job. <laughs> and and then I, I started crying a little bit and just thinking, you know, I bet because I only came to the Valley, as Greg said, a year after Margaret passed. And I, I, I started thinking, you know, I bet we, we could have been friends because uh, our friend Marla had, had told me a bit about Margaret and what she was like. And I, I guess I hadn't heard from Greg too much yet. But um, anyway, I was thinking that. And after sitting there for quite a while, I got up to leave. And on the ground was um, an artificial flower. It was white. And I hadn't seen it when I sat down. It might have been there, but I, I didn't see it. So I picked it up because I figured it must have been from one of the benches. And on the flower in black ink, it said friend. And so I just was like, whoa. <laughs> I just thought that was really um, joyful and funny. And just whether that was an angel messenger or God, or just a funny coincidence, I really can't say, but um, it was, it gave me hope, and uh, brought me comfort, and brought me some joy and happiness, and I think that sometimes we need that, um, especially this year, it's been very, very tough on everybody, so Greg and I just thought that we would share those stories to bring you some comfort and hope whatever you might uh, think of them. So thank you for yeah, listening. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> well, we're back in our musical spot and we're going to do uh, another song for um, uh, kind of a jazzy version of Silent Night, Holy Night. And did you want to? <laughs> well, it just, it was written by Franz Gruber who had to compose it in very short order because mice at his church in Germany ate through the bellows. So this was originally composed for guitar. <laughs> We're going to do it for food and channel. <laughs> <clears throat> to do good christian friends rejoice and i don't think there's any we're doing anything unusual about this and uh that's our fireplace in the background there um in our basement <laughs> and we actually do have a fire real fire on right now <clears throat> okay also known as in dolce jubilo 
if anybody knows it by that. Okay. <laughs> Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give a heed to what we say. News, news, Jesus Christ is born today. Look sad as we bore him now, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. The Christian friends rejoice. And soul and voice, now we hear of endless bliss. Joy, joy, Jesus Christ was born for this. We heard of the heaven's door, and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Good Christian friends, rejoice with heart and soul and voice. that he really can't do a musical offering without wearing a special tie. And so he is going to, he's in the middle of putting that on rather awkwardly in front of you. Let's see if we, if he can do it without doing it in front of a mirror. <laughs> and meanwhile, I will get the Reader's Digest songbook so we can play, oh no, Greg's going to get it. So we can play, uh, one, well, actually, it's a medley of two pieces of music, but did you want to say something about your tie? Yes, yeah, so she'll have to focus in on me first. <laughs> this tie, yeah. because I always, always, always wear a tie to church and always hear a lot of comments about, oh, that's an interesting tie you've got. This tie is special because not only is it Christmas, but it's Tabasco to indicate that we are a hot couple. <laughs> I thought it was because he likes hot sauce, but that okay. Too, that too. <laughs> nice one, honey. <laughs> okay, so two winter songs are following now. Yes. Yeah, these and... aren't Christmas tunes. These are winter tunes. Yes. And Carolyn, you can introduce. Well, we heard, uh, so we, we hear that Ingrid, so much as we said before, loves to dance, and Isla loves to sing at this two-year-old stage in her life and uh, she, I, we heard that these are her two favorite uh, winter songs um, and so I'm just gonna try to make sure you can see oh wait you can't see Greg at the piano sorry a little bit more and, oh, and I see will, my tie too. and see the tie the most important <laughs> okay here we go this is our encore for for all of you who are young in heart, for the granddaughters and all of you who are young at heart. <laughs> Thank you. 
Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks for joining us.